How you doing everybody? It's Phil from New York Rocks and we're rocking down here at the Funkadelic Studios in Manhattan in Times Square. I'm sitting next to no other than Edward Rogers, singer-songwriter. How you doing? All right, mate. How Great. are you doing? Great. Okay. Now, well, let's talk about your history and music and where you're from and how you got started. Sure, yeah. mate. Uh, born in Birmingham, England mm -hmm. and uh, moved over here when I was 13 years old. and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, after a couple of years, got involved in the uh, the punk scene and mm -hmm. uh, got to know a number of the the early CBGBs bands mm -hmm. and the, the uh, Max's Kansas City music scene. Right. Went on to that to be part of the psychedelic music scene and had an accident in the late '80s. Oh. I was a drummer at the time okay. and uh, kind of spent a couple of years kind of getting my whole act back together. Again. So you must have seen all that stuff that was going on down at the Lower East Side with CBGBs and Max's Kansas City, let's say, right? So all you were part whole, of that, right? The whole you were life. still drumming too at that time. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, I, I saw Blondie when they first wow. started out, the Ramones. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey was a good friend of mine. All right. um, the Patti Smith group. I mm -hmm. just did a show with most of the Patti Smith group the other night. Um, so everybody's still around. Right. Yeah. So after my accident, um, I was... Uh, couldn't play the drums, really, yeah, right? Yeah, I couldn't Normal. play drums, but um, some oh. really kind musicians right. and producers kind of encouraged me to take up singing and songwriting. And right. so took that up as a profession um, and, and slowly but surely, you know, we're, we're out to release our new album very shortly, mm -hmm. K, which there I'm holding a copy of right go. now. And I think you know, it was nice to run into you the other night Thank at the you. cutting room, and uh, yeah, yeah. we made our acquaintance there, and you kind of have to invite me to be part of your show. So Thank here you. we are, mates. Thank you. See, you're giving back, and giving back to, to each other, and That's helping right. each other. That's right. Now, you have albums before you produced that you had, uh, like, four other albums? This is your fourth? This, this will be my fourth. Um, right. And um, before that, I was in a band called the Bed Sit Poets and did right. two records there. We had... Uh, a radio hit in um, mm -hmm. Canada, right. then we were in, touring in Spain and Europe and uh, we ended up in the UK. Wow. And um, you know, the other records, the solo albums, this is the mm -hmm. second one that's going to be released right. in Europe. And uh, so right now we, we just got finished doing a, a, uh, a, an opening slot for uh, Colin Blundstone from the okay. Zombies. And, yeah. We did eight dates with Colin. How'd the connection go on with Colin? Huh? I have. Uh, I, I was given an opportunity probably about 20 years ago right. when uh, both Colin and Rod were involved in other projects, and um, I was approached to do a, a best of compilation. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine, James Spino, and myself right. um, got together and uh, we put together this project. And my wife, who worked for, for uh, Epic at the time, okay. proposed it to the people at, at uh, the label, and they said, let's put it out. Wow. So when the record came out, Colin was in retirement at that time, mm -hmm. and um, when we... Yeah, because the Zombies they had a short stay, they, they, they came did. out with all these hit songs, and it didn't catch on right away. That is correct. Yeah. And then uh, they came with Argent, right? Correct. It's the second band, Argent. Time of the Season oh, came man. up, they were already broken up. And they're so legends, right? They're legends, and they're, they're wonderful right. people, they're great musicians. But anyway, I got to know Colin, the album mm -hmm. came out, and we became right. friends, and... Um, we cool. brought him over here, and we I produced a show for him at wow. Fez, and uh, yeah. since then we've been steady friends. So right. an op came for uh, he wanting to do his right. first solo tour mm -hmm. here in the states for forty years, and uh, he asked me to open for him. Very cool. Which was great. You know what's amazing is like you know you had the injury, whatever, but you didn't quit with music. You you had so much passion that you know what it didn't stop you. And you know, that's great for the kids out there and people to know, once you have music and a passion for it, it did, nothing could stop you, right? Absolutely. When you have a passion. If anything, it gives right. you more focus. Um, for me, right. I was always a person who could get by as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, after I had the accident, you had to focus a lot more yeah. to get an inch. Right. So it made you work a lot harder to, to, uh, to, to get, um, feeling with your craft that you right. can proceed forward. Uh, I had an injury too, so right. I know all about it. I was, I was an elevator mechanic, sure. I worked in the city for a while, and then I got hurt in 2000. So I was like, well, what am I gonna do with myself? And here you are. I was like, I always wanted, inspired myself to be a producer, right. you know, and do film and TV, and, and now I'm doing it. So it's like, yeah. See folks, you, you can know. do it. You yeah. just gotta put motivation to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that you 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 you've got a new album out, let's talk about the album and talk about some of the songs that you're sure. on the album. 
Now, K, what's, what's K? Well, I'll give you a whole idea of what the album is about, oh, ladies and gentlemen out there. Hey, right here. Buy it. Um, yeah. K was, was a series of songs I had written, mm -hmm. and um, we came up with an idea of recording this record, and my mm -hmm. producer, who's Don Piper, who's uh, well known for being in a Don Piper situation, and also Sid Straw, mm -hmm. um, he said, let's go into the studio with the, with the best musicians we know and cut a record in four days. Mm -hmm. Everything wow. live. Yeah. And I said, wow, that's a pretty big challenge. You know, and he goes, yeah. we can do it. Yeah. So we got to the studio, we took Brooklyn Recording Studios, and we went over there on a, on a we did two rehearsals, one on a Sunday, one on a Monday. Wow. We started recording on Tuesday. We were done with all the tracks and mm -hmm. the layover of tracks on that Friday night. We worked from 12 until about eight or nine each night. Cool. Every track was cut within three or four takes, a couple of maybe crossovers here and there, mm -hmm. but everything on this record is, is us live. You and prepared, um, you prepared yourself very good, you know? Well, you we pick the right that. musicians too, who right. understand the material, mm -hmm. who have the same influences as you do, and so when you sit down and say, that snare has got to sound like, you know, yeah. uh, uh, a 1972 English folk snare, or that's, mm -hmm. that's got to sound like Roxy music, right. circa 74, to the keyboard player, you've got to sound like Eno here, you mm -hmm. know? So we went after a very like 70s period, mid-period Roxy music mm -hmm. when Eno was still there on some of the tracks. Right. And on some of the other tracks, we wanted a very English Duncan Brown. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know who Duncan Brown is. No, I don't. English like guitarist um, and very, very English country guitarist, right. a very specific sound. There were a couple of tracks that I wanted them to sound like the Kinks, right. Circa uh, Waterloo Sunset. Right. So you know, we had our influences, and I had to kind of give that out because I wanted the band to know the sound we were after. Right. And so we were working on the record, and two right. things happened. Uh, right as the record was about to about to record, mm -hmm. the gentleman that, that the record is named after, who is what is called K, right. uh, uh, Kevin Ayers passed away. Oh. Um, Kevin Ayers sorry. was a member of a right. band called The Soft Machine. He was oh. part of the whole Canterbury scene. Yeah. Uh, had more opportunities in life than, than most of us could ever dream of, uh -huh. but really took things very easy. And, was um, he a young man? or Well, he, he passed away in his late 60s, but yeah. he, he had lived a very... Unexpectedly, though, right? He, unexpectedly, but, but led a very uh, wild life. Right. He, was, he, he was a wild child, uh -huh. and, and uh, right. it affected me, yeah. and, and I ended up writing this song. Well, go, I'll take one step back. Yeah. He had, uh, when I heard, read the news uh, mm -hmm. about his passing, um, he had left a message in the bed, and, right. the, and his last words were, you don't shine if you don't burn. Right. And I took those lyrics, and that oh, night I wrote yeah. a song around it. Yeah. And I turned around to my producer, I said, look, I know we're going into the studio tomorrow, but we've got to include this song. You were inspired. So inspired that, by it. Yeah, and we great. went in, again, yeah, we yeah, cut it within story. three tracks, and there was this lovely ballad, and yeah. all of a sudden, <laughs> the record took on a meaning. The whole right. project... Every song seemed to fit mm -hmm. into the groove of what we were trying to do. Is okay. that like one of the title tracks, or and okay. how many how many songs are actually on this? CD? There are 12, 12, okay, twelve tracks on there. Um, K is, is just one of the songs, but right. it stands out because it mm -hmm. ties the album together. Okay. Now, did you write all the songs? All the songs, except there's one cover by Mr. Kevin Ayers uh, called okay. "After the Show," which is on there, Very cool. which we were originally planning to cut. Yeah. We actually, uh, when we were cutting the record, and, and this is the fun. Yeah. Uh, elements of being right. in the studio is we didn't have time to do the whole mm -hmm. rehearsal on every song. So there's one track on there called Peter Pan's Dream Is Over. Right. And it's 8 minutes and 28 seconds on, that, on the album. But wow. when we recorded it, one take from 11 to 12 at night, yeah. uh, it came out to be 29 minutes long. Mm -hmm. yeah. No mistakes, no errors, wow. sounded like a Pink Floyd, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> total the jam the session, the, the screaming. Yeah. The, the raga, the whole movement, cool. and we got through it and we said, well, for musicians, mm -hmm. we love it, you know? Right. But we had to edit it down because was obviously... Was there singing on it? Yeah, was there, there was singing on there. So we edited it down to 28, uh, to, oh, cool. so, excuse me, eight minutes and, 20, and 28 seconds. Uh -huh. So it's on there, and it shows the musicianship of a band, and it shows the, the actual, live in the studio, what you can do. Uh -huh. And I, I'll tell you, when you listen to that, you'll think it's... Early Pink Floyd. Yeah, take it home. I'm gonna it's bring, yours, actually. I'm gonna listen to it on the way home. Listen and tell I'll, me what you think. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Because uh, this is a great interview and a lot of history. You've been around since the whole New York scene. Yeah. You you have a lot of friends in music. So talk about some of the people that you work with and that you have friends here in New York City 
Talk about them and the influences they had on you. Sure. And then we're going to talk about a little bit what went on. You actually performed at the cutting room, secondly. We'll, we'll talk so about So we'll that. talk about that first, about the people that you work sure. with. Sure. And maybe who you're inspired to work with. Okay. okay. Um, on this particular album, right. uh, I have James Mastro playing mm -hmm. guitar. James is the guitarist with Ian Hunter. Right. A uh, great solo artist, uh, also known for his work in the bongos. He's okay. worked with John Cale. Mm -hmm. um, he's worked with, with everyone. Right. He's one of the, the real solid guitarists, mm -hmm. great for lead. Cool. Don Piper, who I've talked to you about a little earlier, is the right. producer of this and three other albums of mine, and mm -hmm. kind of my musical MD yeah. partner, and mm -hmm. understands, he's, he's great at what he yeah. does, and uh, rhythm guitar, mm -hmm. harmonies, um, and basically produce, and mixing, mm -hmm. producing and mixing the record. Right. On drums, Dennis right. Dyken from the Smithereens. Wow. Dennis and I oh, started okay. together. The first gig I ever had right. was, was opening for the Smithereens first right. show. So I've known Dennis from the very first gig. Mm -hmm. Sal Mater is a, wow. is a walking history. Sal Mater is one, another lifetime buddy. Mm -hmm. He started off in a Max's Kansas City band mm -hmm. called Milk and Cookies, who right. are reissuing their album and doing a reunion show in the near future. Wow. Uh, Sal then went to England wow. and was uh, in Roxy Music. Cool. Uh, left Roxy Music to join Sparks. Mm -hmm. Currently, he has his residence and plays as, as a bass player mm -hmm. and cracker. Mm -hmm. So he's around. Uh, Joe McGinty. Uh, oh, you have a good memory. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know all my, they're all friends of mine, mate. I see them every week. You know, you know what I wanted to say? You, you resemble Charlie Sheen. Did anybody ever tell you that? Uh, I wish I had Charlie? his money. I, yeah, would, I would definitely I, thank you. I, I'll take has, that as a compliment, mate. He has a uh, wild life, you know. Well, I, I've definitely <laughs> been around a, a number of people, you know. And like I said, a handsome looking guy, you know. Well, thank you. You know, I'm sorry, mate. I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, but the bottom line is that um, you know this this album was a labor of love, and yeah, that, yeah. that's just some of the people that played on the record. Mm -hmm. And again, we had no time. It was. You right. got to have the right band to, to knock it out of the corner. Okay. Now we, we were talking about uh, you. You and I first met, yeah. met each other at the cutting room, right? And um, you fantastic were, place. The sound is excellent there. It's, I love the sound. It's a great club, and and yeah. I was fortunate. John Ford had asked me to um, mm -hmm. open for him, and uh, I love John's writing. I hope to one day write nice with him. Sweetheart, I love working nice with man. them. They're so cool people. They like you very, know, very no cool. drama. It's no like drama. Really very nice. low key. Yeah. And he, he's got a, one of the sweetest cool. voices. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm inspired by his work. And mm -hmm. uh, he came to me and he said, I'd like, I'd like to do a Brits Invade right. the Cutting Room show. And, and he said, but I need somebody else. Who yeah, can you yeah. recommend? And I said, I think I got somebody that, that is not, he's not a Brit, but he had more success in, right. in, in, uh, in England than he did here. And I said, uh, let, me, let me give a buzz to Alan Merrill. And mm -hmm. Alan Merrill used to be in Bank Hall. The Arrows right. had a hit in, in England in, with I Love Rock and Roll, which subsequently Joan right. Jett had the hit with here, along with uh, Britney, Spears, Britney Spears and yeah. Miley Cyrus has right. covered it. So Alan's a very uh, recluse gentleman, but mm -hmm. he was kind enough to come up and just do four songs. So cool. it was a really special evening. And, yeah. uh, Thank you for being okay. part of it and filming it. Now, us. yeah, I was like, oh, this is great. I have the performance when you performed with your band. Right. Now, that night that you performed, some of the songs that you performed, are they all from this album? A right? number of the songs or, okay. that you saw are from this album. We're, we're going to be touring uh, for the next good six, eight months on okay. this album while we're working on some other projects. Okay. Well, we're going to show we're going to show one of the songs from the from that performance. Yeah, you you pick on what you want to yeah. play. You 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 have to listen to this and you look at the footage I'm and you, it. you're going to have the, one, the selection. So yeah. therefore, folks, don't like the video. It's his fault. Yeah, he's seen all the bands from the beginning. He had mentioned to me before. He even seen Kiss when they first started out at the Coventry. I used to live next door, so yeah. I, I got oh, to go there every I mean, week. You've seen uh, the Dolls and Blondie and, and the Blondie. Talking Heads, probably, and Mons. everybody, right? Um, I'm a little bit younger, a little yeah, bit, but not yeah. much, but. I was from Staten Island, so I was a little bit too young to go David into the Johansson city. David Johansson used to, he's from yeah. Staten Island. So, yeah, I'm I actually you know Sylvain Sylvain and uh, know, Cheetah Chrome. I know Sylvain so really some, uh, well. <laughs> yeah, Sylvain is, okay. uh, is we, we've done shows Great guy. And really nice guy. Cool. Yeah. He's All right. So the people out there, they want to find out more what's going on with you. Maybe they want to pick up the album. Let's tell everybody the information on that, how they can find that, and then we're going to go to the video of Edward Rogers performing at the Cutting Room. How about right. that? That sounds sounds brilliant. Okay, um, tell okay this, this record is, is officially out on July 8th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be available at, at all the normal 
all the all the good record shops right. okay mm -hmm. it's also on iTunes right. and you can also get obviously uh, order a copy from mm -hmm. Um, Amazon UK or Amazon, any one of those those outlets, it's available. Right. Um, it's going to be in good independent record shops mm -hmm. like Other Music, and mm -hmm. uh, I think we, we've got some mm -hmm. shops in Brooklyn that are going to be covering it. And um, you know, you can also call. You can you, you know what? You can even <laughs> reach me at bclub69 at aol.com. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll send you a copy. Uh, tell me what you think. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, tell me. I'll chat back to you. Only the best because we get the best. One of the best music is come from Britain, and I want to. I want to thank you very much for the wonderful interview. Thank you, sir. And uh, you rock and keep, sure. keep the keep the rock and roll alive. So Keeping the rock keep and roll alive. That's right? what I say. And you, you know, right. brilliant to be with you too, mate. Okay. Thank you very All much. All right. Well, let's go check out the performance at the cutting room with Edward Rogers. Who rocks better than us? Nobody. We you rock mean. the best. Peace out, everybody. Let's go watch that performance. Cheers. This next song is kind of like, if you've ever woken up in the morning these days and you try to see what's going on in the news, ain't no way to tell, dude. Um, Don reminded me before we came up here, he said, CNN is not a place to go for the news. I don't know where it is anymore, the news, but this particular song is written about how crappy it is to get the news and how hard you have to look for the real news these days. There's a song called What Happened to the News Today, and it's from a new album coming out on July 8th called K, Yay! which we'll tell you about more later on. Yay. Yay. say big brothers taking control spinning his tail so we may never know candy floss dressings can make us believe the way you tell your stories to me i said to face the facts, your words in print, don't talk back, every time we turn around, they don't want us to see, cause they don't want us looking back, especially you and me, I said, what happened to the news today, been hidden away from the likes of you and me, then like stories are the media specialty, come, someone on top, someone Face.